So I appreciate all the messages. You guys did a wonderful job, and uh, I'm glad God used you. And uh, Brother Laro was on my heart, and I uh, appreciate Brother Laro and his ministry there, and, and I appreciate the, the ability to be able to have Brother Laro with us tonight. Down from Charity Baptist Church in um, Newcastle, Indiana, he's out there on Railroad Road, and uh, been a faithful man of God there, and, and God's used him in a couple different churches, but uh, he's stuck there. They haven't found out he's there long enough yet to keep him there, but uh, we appreciate Brother Laro. So, Brother Laro, you come on, sir, in the pulpit here. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, all right, I'm not used to a pulpit this big. Hopefully it'll make me humble, amen. Or it's good to be here in the Lord's house. Amen. I feel very privileged today to be asked to preach. I was going to do a little survey of all the preachers that's already preached. Brother Bruce has already taken care of that. But I thankful for preachers. And uh, we call this a preacher's fellowship. And sometimes maybe that'll discourage big folks from coming because they think it's a preacher's fellowship. And uh, but it's a fellowship for preachers, but everyone else ought to come. Amen. 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 And I love preachers. <coughs> and uh, I preached my first revival in 1971. I was a deacon. And Brother uh, Jimmy Sewell heard me testify and asked me to come help my pastor preach a meeting. Now I'm a deacon. 1971, with Jimmy Sewell, 20th Street, and we preached every other, I preached it one night, my pastor preached another night, and we saw three souls saved in that Man, service. Boy, and I guess I was what you call a lay preacher uh, for years, just when the pastor would leave, I'd preach, fill in for him, just like Stephen, I reckon. <laughs> and uh, the Lord, as Brother Dave Waters already mentioned, the Lord got so heavy on me, I had to surrender in 1986, and I've been doing the best I could since that time. And uh, I like to encourage preachers. I'm praying that God will help me to encourage you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Because one thing about preachers, we get discouraged, but we try to hide it from our congregation. Sure. But we don't want them to see the discouragement that we all face from time to time. But I want to just say that God knows where you're at, what you're doing. If you're minding God, that's all that really matters. So I'm going to look at something that I've never preached before in the book of Numbers, chapter 2. I'm going to read a verse of Scripture. And I want to read a verse of Scripture in the chapter 10. And the first 10 chapters of the book of Numbers is actually uh, God's giving them direction on how to line up, how to do the things that he has them to do as they move, as they follow the cloud by, by day and the pillar of fire by night. And God gives them instructions. And they all have something to do. And he lines up the tribes in order. And they, they follow the leadership of Moses in, the, in that order. Right. And I'm going to talk about tonight, the Lord will help me. What is God doing, what is God doing to me? Or what is God doing to you sometimes as we would think? In Numbers chapter 2, my medication makes my mouth dry and I carry water. So pardon me. Numbers chapter 2, verse 31. And they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were 103,050 and 7,000. And six hundred, they shall go hindmost with their standards. If you don't know what hindmost, Dan, you're going to be in the back. Right. <laughs> right. Chapter 10, book of Numbers, verse 31. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness. And thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. Speaking of Dan. Father, we thank you for the reading. We ask your blessings, your leadership and direction, Lord, today. 
We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. They were talking to Dan being in the back as eyes for those that were traveling through the wilderness. Dan was, was blessed. But I'm, I'm thinking about Dan. I'm trying to compare Dan uh, with preachers today. Now Dan had the same sacred as, as, as the rest of the tribes. Matter of fact, Dan, if you'll study it, and I got the figures down, but Dan was the second biggest tribe next to Judah. And here Dan is in the back. I think sometimes preachers feel like, what, what is God doing to me? I seem to be in the back. <coughs> Pardon me. I mean, you spend uh, uh, many days studying the Word of God. You'll, you'll, you'll develop the message. You'll, uh, you'll do what you can to, uh, to feed the flock of God. And, and I don't know what this doesn't happen to all preachers, but then uh, uh, sometimes you go to the house of God expecting to, uh, to preach to a pretty good crowd. And you spend all that time studying and, and, and you get a, a few people to preach to. And, and if you're not careful, you'll say, God, what, what, God, what are you doing to me? Right. I'm all prepared. There's a few people here to uh, listen to it. But uh, it reminded me of the fact that God uh, tells us in the Word of God. He said, uh, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Right. That's where we're at. I'll never forget a homecoming I had. I had a, a preacher at all uh, scheduled to come and uh, to preach, and and I've been a lot of a lot of my ways have been somewhat spontaneous, but uh, this preacher didn't show up at my homecoming. I didn't think about it, <coughs> brother Bruce. What are you going to do? Well, the Bible said, "Be instant in season, out of season." So I had to get up in the out of season, amen. Right. And I, I didn't even know what I was going to preach. I didn't have an outline, brother. Brother Waters, I just, I, I just uh, kind of uh, done the old-fashioned way. I just opened my mouth, and let her go. You know, <laughs> preach what God told me to preach, amen. I started preaching against sin, amen. 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 Why well, everybody ought to like a preacher to preach against sin. Yeah. I mean, right? we're all sinners by the sake of the grace of God, but I mean, we're saved sinners or, or lost sinners, but <coughs> preach against sin, amen? Right. Then I had a family leave the church. Oh, amen. Oh, my homecoming. I preached against sin. I go to see what's the matter. They informed me that I wouldn't be coming back. I'm trying to tell you how I feel sometimes. Like, hey, God, what are you doing to me? I'm doing the best I can. I'm studying. I'm preparing. I'm trying to preach. And you can get discouraged. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. They said, well, you, you preached. And our daughter, our daughter just told us that she had an attraction to girls. And she thinks she's a lesbian. And you preached. Against Sodomy. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey. Amen. I mean, we preach against sin. We stand for God. Yeah. We try to do what God wants us to do. Uh, what I'm saying tonight, uh, th this evening, that Dan was the last in the line. We go to the fellowships. How's your church doing, preacher? And we always seem like we go to the numbers. Well, listen, we had 150 some, and I said, I hope they don't ask me how many. <laughs> I had 16 funerals in, in, in one year, brother, and, and many of them was out of my church, and they didn't get replaced, amen. I mean, you know, I, 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 sometimes I feel like uh, just being honest, and you preachers know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you just burn the candle at both ends. You do the best you can. You feel like you're the very last one in line. Everybody else is prospering. The church is growing. And you're preaching to 15 or 20. Right. I want to encourage you. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to encourage you today. Because yeah. if God puts you there to preach to 10 or 15 or 20 or 100 or 150, God didn't tell you or me every one of us wants a big crowd. Every one of us wants to bring a lot of people in. We're all wanting to see the, the world saved, our community saved. Right. But if you're preaching to 10 or 15 and you're being dedicated and committed to God and you're faithful to preach the Word of God 
It's an incision out of season, reproving and rebuking and exhorting of all long suffering and die. You are faithful to what God called you Amen. to do. Amen. 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 It's all your responsibility. Yeah. Amen. Yes, I'd like to come here. I, I pastor the church. I pass, my first pastoral. And I baptized 78 people in one, one year. Had all kinds of professions of faith. Started with seven. Was running over a hundred. I find myself. We're in the poorest community in Randolph County. And them people would give you the shirt off their back. And we were so full and crowded in that little bitty building, we decided to build on. We started building on, I think 40 by 60. We didn't borrow a dime. Somebody would give the door, somebody would buy the two before, somebody else would say, I'm going to buy the carpet. And I'm up on the roof of that church in my old, old clothes, my old hat on. I'm roofing the roof. And here comes a TV. A TV camera. Old crew comes up on the roof. There, that, and you know we're, we're breaking. At that time, I was the East Central Association, uh, East Central Association, Southern Baptist Association, and we were breaking all the records at the East Central Association. We was breaking all the record. They were sending people out to interview me and all, and I'm up on the roof, and they got a camera stuck in my face, and they say, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, what do you, what do you? What do you contribute your success to? Is it the Southern Gospel music? I said, no, I'm not. I hope it helps. Is it you? Definitely not me. I was ministering to people that was hungry and needy and, and the gospel, that was gospel hungry and I was just a little preacher doing the best I could. People were getting saved despite me. Amen. They stick that camera, brother. Pips and interview me in there. Yeah. They said, what do you contribute? I said, God. Yeah. God says, God's the one. Sure. I mean, hey, yeah. it's not up. We're going to go out and knock on doors. We're going to saturate the communities with literature. But if God if God sees fit, he'll give the increase. If they come to my house of God because of my personality, I haven't won anybody at all. They've got to come because they're lost and need the Lord Jesus Christ. And they get saved to the grace of God. And God be the glory. Amen. 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 I feel like sometimes I'm last in line. Amen. I've had some successes. Then you have to follow me and I go to another place. It's like warm water. Yeah. I mean, I was passing these people getting saved on me. This people, these people said, hey, we went out in the 12. They said, don't invite a preacher without our permission. Oh. You can't have a miss missionary in here unless you go through our council. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I asked them why. <laughs> they want to beat the Methodists to the steakhouse. We went out by 12. I heard of these, I've heard of these places that existed. These churches, these social churches, I heard they existed, but I never thought in a million years I'd be in the middle of one. And there I was. I said, I'll resign Sunday. This is not going to work out. Well, amen. Last in line. Make a long story short, <clears throat> my wife got in my living room. We prayed. God, you had a door open for me, and I'll go in it. You show me. Three days later, <coughs> he could call me. Early work. So when I tried to pass, I talked to the church, and they knew I was going up there and trying out. But before I got out of that church, they said, We want you to come here. And that was in February of, of uh, 2002. I've been there since then. Hey, it wasn't my first experience, but thank God it wasn't the second one. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a mixture of both. And I feel like sometimes we get last, we feel like we're last in line, we're insignificant, nobody notices. I'll be going to the camp meeting, nobody knows. Thank God he spelled my first name right. <laughs> That's a rarity for me. Dan was last, last in line. Preachers keep on preaching. Yes. Amen. Just keep on preaching. I don't care if there's 20 or 30. There's, hey, I tell you, there's some preachers out back in the North Florida, North, uh, North Florida. Nowhere, brother, brother Phipps has got more integrity than most of us put together. Amen. I mean, I, 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 I see folks, 
I leave the house of God and I had a deacon, man, I loved him. I miss that deacon. Uh, he was a deacon. He had more integrity than his little family than most preachers had. Uh, I had a family to leave the church because uh, I preached against sin. Brother Jordan, he come up, he put his arm around me. He said, Preacher, don't you worry about it. You just keep on preaching. We'll rouse up another bunch. <laughs> we'll rouse up some more. Amen. He just preach. Don't. Don't walk on that chair. Don't get in a niche. Preach the word of God. Be instant. Preach, preach, preach. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. 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 Preach it. Amen. Amen. I thought about that homecoming and that deacon, and there's a benefit bringing up the rear. You don't need a rear view mirror. There you go. Hey. You only got one way to go. I thought that was neat, to brother. Brother. Brother Bruce will be first in line. I'm going to preach on the last one. <laughs> See? When you're back in the back, everybody else is doing better. And your churches are, are doing, you might, wonderful. Praise God. I want to, I want to shout with you. I want to praise God for you. I want, I want to help you. I want to be a booster. I want to be an encourager. And I got to watch it because the carnal part of me wants go. to get jealous. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. you got to watch it. I want to, Sincerely to me, God bless you, brother. I'm glad God's blessing you like that. Amen. Amen. That's the line. You know what? I study this too. He sometimes we judge our preachers by how big a crowd they run. Maybe what kind of suit they got. Mm -hmm. What kind of jewelry the wife wearing. Man, that don't mean nothing. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Give me a man of God that loves God. And brother Don, you, brother Dave, you're right. We got to love our people. Amen. I remember when I used to preach. Boy, it made good preaching. I, I get the preacher standing at their feet shouting, praising God. I said, boy, praise God. Sometimes uh, headlights, uh, our work, uh, headlights, uh, taillights are better than headlights. <laughs> what that means is people leaving would be better than th those come. That's what it meant. That made good preaching, but I was wrong. That's right. <laughs> People need ministry. Yeah. Those, especially those ones that uh, uh, cause you all the trouble and the struggles and the difficulties and call you in the middle of the night about uh, uh, something that don't amount to a hill of beans. Them's the one that needs your ministry. That's when I need God's help to minister them folk that needs ministry to. God called us to minister and to help those that are in need. Amen. 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 I had to learn that the hard way. Of course, I didn't go to college. I've just been preaching since I got saved. I didn't even understand. One preacher told me years ago, Brother Andrew, I was asking about the call to preach, and I was preaching all along. I mean, I didn't run from God too much. I preached, but I didn't spare to preach. And he said, this was his advice. Well, if you can get out of it, get out of it. I didn't know what that meant then. But you can get out of it. You want to be miserable? You can get out of it. But you want the you want the peace of God. You'll get into what God calls you to do. And I know in my heart, and I'm not claiming to be no big preacher or nothing like that. I'm the least of the least, as Paul would say. But I tell you one thing. I know one thing about about my brother Laurel. Brother Laurel, God called me to preach. God dealt with me, and I had to do it. Or it seemed like dying. Amen. Then I. Thought about here how that there's those servants out the backside of nowhere. They ain't never going to have a name for Will, remember? They won't be big top notch preachers or singing, but they got more integrity because they're preaching and they're standing there in little community churches mm -hmm. all over the place and they're preaching the Word of God and they're being yeah. faithful. Many of them don't take a dime, they don't get a salary, they don't get any love offering. I remember the first revival meeting I held. My brother Phipps at Caney Branch, yeah. all been in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Didn't have indoor plumbing. I preached a week and a half, I think it was, in that church. And, and they were starving their pastor out at a little United Baptist church. And they gave me $33. Man, I thought, 
$33, this thing will be very prosperous. This preaching stuff. This ain't going to be very prosperous. And that, and that poor little pastor was getting starved out. And I and I had I gave him the $33 plus what the uh, money I could gather up to get. Uh, uh, I forget what it was, maybe 75 bucks or something of that nature to keep him there. But I, I'm telling you what's up. Boy, this evangelism thing. I'd only preached five, well, I'd preached a long time before that. But after surrendering, I'd only preached five messages and I found myself in a revival meeting. Yeah. $33. Amen. Amen. I said, well, Lord, this ain't going to be prosperous. And I met a preacher in that meeting. And he called me over to his church the uh, next month in a weekend meeting. And he gave me $250. I said, well, that ain't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you just got to preach. And I'm trying to hurry up here. And I thought about the burden of being a dad. Just seemed like everything they, uh, sometimes, some, I felt this way, that everything I touch seems to go bad. When I try to fix a problem for the, for the day, it seems like the problem's in the church, and I'll, I'll try to fix them, repair them, and it seems like you break a cut, you pick it back together, and you glue it, and then you give it to Brother Larry, and he bashes it again. You can't ever get it fixed right. I mean, I was trying to do the best I could. Have you ever been that way? Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. yeah. Trying to fix problems? Well, I tell you, you just got to give it to God. There's some things you can't fix. Yeah. Right. You can talk to your blue in the face, and you can love them as much as you want, and you can pray for them and all. But you got sometimes you just got to turn people over to God. Amen. Sometimes right. preachers don't feel like they fit the bill to help. Amen. I thought about Dan here. Dan Burden. He's a product. He's a product of an illegitimate relationship. Some folks say, "Well, you have white privilege. You're born but." Silver spoon in your mouth. Oh yeah, really? He couldn't. His, he, he couldn't have children. Jacob went into Belia, had a, a child in Nephtali. If I'm saying that right, Nephtali, one of his twelve. When Dan was illegitimate, product. And I thought about our, our lives and Dan's life. Dan's important to God. Dan's got the same savior they got. Dan's in a tribe. He's the second biggest tribe there is. And yet he's in the back. But he's still important. He's got the same Savior. He still loves God. He's doing what God instructed him to do. Amen. That's what we have to do. Have you ever felt like a loser in life? Hey, I'm a product of 13 children. There's 10 boys in my family and 3 girls. And they, call, they used to call me, believe it or not, they called me Little Laryl. <laughs> my brother Eddie was... Probably 14, 15 years old. He was 5'10". I'm about 5'6". My baby brother's bigger than me. 5'8". Hey, I feel right at home when I go to uh, that you know that place you go to to get used clothing. What is it called again? Good Goodwill. Good yeah, I remember that. A lot. Of, I seen a lot of the britches coming from Eddie past me on up with the Roger. Because uh -oh. I'm little than both my brothers on both sides. But I know what it's like to take the britch leg and uh, roll it up so you can wear the britches, amen? I mean, I, I'm not lying about my age. Uh, uh, when I was 14 years old, I told him I was 16, went to work for Howard's Drive-In, making 60, 60, 35 cents an hour when I make plus tips, amen? I mean, I'm privileged, amen? white privilege, amen? <laughs> 35 cents an hour. I bought a 53 Chevy Power Glide. You know what that is off my dad? And it wouldn't, we'd drive it to work. My brother Eddie drove it. I owned it. I kept reminding him that's my car. Although I couldn't drive it, I wasn't old enough to drive. But that was my car. Yeah. We'd drive around Broad Street to get home because the Power Glide wouldn't even run up Broad Street. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I worked till I paid that thing off and I traded it for a straight stick 54 Chevy and it would go up Broad Street, baby. Amen. I mean, listen, listen. I mean, I'm telling you, I know what life is. I know what it's like. Sure. I remember my daddy coming home, 100 pound bag of 15 pinto beans on his, on his back. You know? Well. Uh, I didn't even know. I thought when you had pinto beans, that's all you had until I got married. <laughs> I married his wife. And she had pinto beans and fried potatoes and some other stuff. I said, really? All this stuff goes with this? <laughs> pinto beans is what I thought. Pinto beans.
beans and cornbread. Amen. <laughs> I still eat them out of respect. They say my wife's at any time. <laughs> my dad was always out of jobs, working. He'd lose a job. And then we'd buy an old car. And he'd drive it down to the creek. We'd take old bar soap and water. And back in them days, they used to put grease on the cars. I don't know why yet to this day they did that. But I sure washed a many of them. My dad would take some sandpaper and sand off that old car and take a paint brush and thin that paint out and paint that old car. And he'd take and put some white walls on it. He'd buy it for 25 or 30 bucks, sell it for 50, maybe some, some more pinto beans. <laughs> I mean, Dan's life wasn't a bag of rolls. My life hasn't been great. I, I was poor and I didn't even know it. We were growing up. Everybody was just like we was. Yeah. Yeah. My baby brother who's gone now, Johnny, I don't know if I should say this in a pulpit or not, but we'd roll the mattresses out on the floor to sleep. Me and Johnny slept together because we didn't, let's see how I can say that. Neither one of us went to the bathroom during the night. <laughs> My little brother in the middle of the night screamed. I'm laying right by him, and he had a pretty blonde head of hair. Uh, when he grew up, and you ever seen? But he had a calic because a rat bit him in the forehead in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't. I, I don't know where they get out. Born with a silver spoon in my head. Yeah. Right. Huh? right. I know what hard times. Preach time preacher. I didn't even know it was hard times. No. I just everybody seemed to be the same. Yeah. When you want to go to C Avenue, you leave A Avenue, you had to go through B Avenue and fight someone in B Avenue to get to C Avenue. I thought that's the way the world lived. <laughs> I didn't know. Of course I was little then, little narrow. I might have had the little band syndrome. I'd fight anybody. I didn't care how big they was or whatever. <laughs> brother Fish, my little brother who was bigger than me, I'd have to take over his spot with those fellas because he couldn't do it. He was too nice and sweet and kind. And I was mean as a skunk. <laughs> Dan. Dan was a loser in life. You can't get bitter old things. Bitterness is a terrible thing. Amen. I'm crappy for all you men that's prospering in the ministry. I can't afford to get bitter. I just want to be like you. I want to do better. And I evaluate and analyze myself all the time, brother, uh, on what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong in the ministry. And I don't have, I don't have a problem asking you inf information or advice. Some of you have been at it a long time. I got saved December 26, 1964. I didn't know anything about anything. And it's been always with me, it's been the school of hard knocks. I started telling everybody, I went from an introvert to an extrovert overnight. When I got saved the grace of God, I started going to the place that, where I work and all them painters and hand painters who stand out there in the aisle and gawk at the women and all. I was having my back to, to the, the people that was walking by after the cafeteria. I witnessed every one of them men. I didn't even know how to pick, tell people to get saved. I, was, I witnessed every one of them. I said, if you'll just come over here and listen to this preacher preach, you can get saved like I did. And you can get saved with the grace of God if you just hear what the man of God said. Because I, I got saved last night. And I remember oh, a guy named uh, Farrell Smith. He took me by the shoulders. He moved me aside. He said, Bowley, you'll get over it. I've got saved before. Just get over it. <laughs> there was a few years went by and I saw Farrell Spiff he's driving a fork truck hey Farrell come here a minute I'm going to tell you something I'm going to tell you something I didn't get over it no. he said what are you talking about yeah. I said, you told me I witnessed to you 20 years ago not you told me I'd get over it I want to tell you I'm preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm pastor of the little church. And I didn't get over it. I ain't going to get over it. I love it. I can't help it. I get excited. I'm glad to be saved with the grace of God. I'm glad to have a purpose and thank for God and love. I'm just glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to be a part of the things of God, the work of God. Amen. I just want to be a little part. I don't have to be the number one. I don't care to go to camp meetings. They don't know my name. That's all right. I can care less. Amen. 
I didn't, God didn't tell me I'd be popular. Matter of fact, God really, honestly, He didn't tell me to have a big crowd. But I guarantee you, I'm trying to. Sure. I believe we want to have people. Sure. I want to see people saved. Sure. I want to see my church prosperous. Sure. I want to see people come to the Lord. And I, I want to be there to disciple folks. I want to, I want to stay in that Bible. I know what it's like to study. I, I, I taught the adult Sunday school uh, a class for 12 years. And I've spent 12, 14 hours and take my lunch bag and take my Bible and study the Sunday school lesson so I can teach a lesson. Amen. I, I spent more time studying to teach than I do to preach. But God used that. By the way, right. you ought to study. Anybody can grab an outline, jump up. Right. Yeah, that's right. You better study. It's, it's good to get information from others. Preachers, give me all the outlines you want to give me. I'll try to use them. But you know why? Nothing takes the place of you and God in that little place by yourself in that closet and you praying and you studying. This is a brand new message to me. I'm, I'm, from, all over the, I'm from all over the field with this thing. And believe it or not, I got some real nice notes there that I can change. <laughs> I mean, I put them out there, I know. But Dan was last in the line. He was last in the life. He got a, a loser in life, you could say. But he finally... I mean, here, here he, he's a loser in life. But you find out in the Bible, I said, look, I tried to find some place where Dan complained. Complained that you won't find with Dan. Okay, we're going to draw lottery now and see how the land falls, okay? Now, Dan's a loser in the line, and, and Dan's a loser in life. Maybe I'll do pretty good in the land. I mean, hey. <laughs> I've got, I'm the second biggest tribe. I'm the very second biggest tribe. Maybe I'll do pretty good in this drawing. Maybe God will make them draw, draw that straw that I need to draw and then I can get my land. Mm -hmm. and by the way, study this book. You'll find Dan. Dan's name means a fighter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the tribes was getting their land. Judah was the biggest. They were all getting their land. Okay, I see my brother Dan. How, how are you going to do? Well, I've been a loser in line and a loser in line. Maybe I'll be a winner. No. You're a loser in the land too, Dan. <laughs> yeah, right. You're a loser, Dan. What are you going to do, Dan? Well, Caleb's climbing that mountain. He's claiming his victory. He's fighting. Yeah. Dan said, I, I believe I'll just go out and fight them Amalekites and I'm going to get my land that God wants me. I'm talking about your land is your church. I mean, your church, it might be small in number. It might be small in the discipline. It may not be even noticeable. But thank God you can go out there and fight that enemy and build that land up. And then, by the way, when Dan got done, he had enough land. Right. While the others was coasting, while the others was taking it easy, rearing back, Got our retirement. We got our land. Dan was out there fighting. Right. In his land. Amen. God never told you, pastors, or me either, that it was going to be easy. Right. 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 But we're supposed to be so with it. Amen. And we're supposed to be building up the kingdom of God. Sure. Right. Some of you seem to be doing pretty well at it. You, those of you who's doing real well and running big numbers. Would you do me a big favor and pray for me? Because I'm not. I've been striving. I've been there 19 years. And uh, I thought by this time I'd be running at least a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> My vision was. Hey, I thought I was going to have a big this, that, and the other. And, man, everybody's going to come out. And everybody's going to get right involved. Everybody, everything's going to fall into play. Yeah. yeah. Don't get disappointed. Don't quit. And by the way, I'll say something about me. I have never been a quitter. Even when I was a fighting as a young man, I'd never say, Uncle, you might as well knock me out because I ain't going to say, Uncle. There you go. <laughs> God don't call quitters. Amen. 
God, no, I'm getting so sick and tired of belly aching preachers that yeah. God has made. We got, hey, we've got a better day. We've never had it. And all these belly aching preachers, sometimes I, I sometimes I'm taking the old carnal of all I have. I said, I wish, I wish they'd just go out and get drunk and just forget it, throw in the towel and quit. And that's the way they feel about it. <laughs> Don't you ever get in the flesh? Don't you ever get in the flesh? Quit belly aching. Matter of fact, you belly ache. I guarantee you one thing, I can belly ache better. Better than you. I can probably do a lot of belly aching. I was raised, remember, I was raised with ten boys, three girls. I know something about belly aching. <laughs> we get a chicken on the table. I'd remember, I'd say, I was a little bit, little bit, toe headed boy. I get the breast. You think I ever got the breast? <laughs> no. My older sister and her husband, Max, heart took me out to the fair one time. The Indianapolis Fair. In the in, in, in fair. And the first time I ever remember going into a restaurant, and that lady actually come up and asked me what I wanted. My mom never asked me what I wanted. <laughs> I was never asked what I wanted. <laughs> to this day, I can eat anything you put on that table. It don't matter to me. I'm used to eating whatever I get, I eat. That's right. <laughs> and I, that waitress said, well, young man, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I don't remember, it's been a long time. I, I just remember this part. What do you want? I said, I want the breast. <laughs> Max and Irma laughed about that for years. <laughs> Little Merrill said, I want the breast. <laughs> Guess what? No, I got no. it. <laughs> 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 Woo! Hallelujah, I got the breast. Never got it at home. <laughs> I used to think my daddy was, I remember my mom, we, we couldn't drink after ourselves. We couldn't drink after one another. We weren't supposed to eat after one another. I don't wonder why mom did it. Well, you know what? She knew the German sprayer. Yeah. And so she kept her kids from one another <coughs> pretty much. But to this day, I've never drank after my wife. She drinks after me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm a product of what I've been taught. <laughs> Amen. I'm saying I didn't I wouldn't I didn't grow up with a, with a silver spoon in my mouth. Amen. Amen. I know what it was to work. I know what it was, what it was to pay book rental. I knew how to clothe myself. My daddy couldn't afford to buy us all clothes. I, I built a right home at Goodwill. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> I got a nice suit on here. I, I, I might brag a little bit. It all look good. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andrew Phipps. Hand me down. I'm just Thank you, Brother Andrew. <laughs> So much I couldn't work. No. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of that. I'll tell you, God's put a love in my heart for people. Thank you for that message. I mean, you know, even when I was young, the, one, the kids in school, they wouldn't have nothing to do with the ones I was drawn to. I believe God started preparing me for the ministry way before I ever knew anything about God. Yeah. Mm. I love people. Mm -hmm. My mother taught us to love one another. Right. And we did definitely in the family couldn't get in a fight. But mom would, mm -hmm. mom would make us kiss one another. That's the last thing in the world we wanted to do is kiss one another. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we stand in a line. My mom would get mad at one of us. She had this habit. She'd bite her thumb. And she'd say, Gerald, Richard, Eddie, Roger, David, whichever one you are. <laughs> We stand in the line. Maybe that's why I cry easy today. I have to get in the line and get a whooping. You better get a good switch too. And before I ever got struck, as a matter of fact, that's how I learned, learned to run fast, run around the circle trying to beat the switch. <laughs> Amen. But I see my girl, he get a whipping. Here comes Richard, he get a whipping. Here comes Eddie, he get a whipping. 
I lose my school. I start crying. Amen, brother. I start crying. I mean, I still get, I cry easy today because, and when God thinks about God, I don't want God to with me. I want to please the Lord. I want to be successful. I don't want to be discouraged. I don't want to feel insignificant. But it's a battle. The old nature. We want to be important, don't we? We want to make a name, don't we? We want to make everybody say, boy, Brother Merrill, his church is doing great. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what I'll say this. I'm doing what God told me to do. Amen. But I'm not quitting. I still, I still have a passion to preach. I know I don't preach like everybody else. I don't care how you preach. Brother John, I love to hear you preach. We're different. I'm a little emotional. Maybe too much. But that's me. Brother Waters, I love you. I love the way you preach. You help me. Where's that other preacher, brother? I appreciate your message. Well, I need to consider my ways. You, you always, you help me. I mean, I, I think we're supposed to examine ourselves. We're supposed to consider our way. We've got to love one another. We have to have our faith in action. Amen. He's a loser. And lying. A loser in life. A loser in the land. Have you ever felt like that? A loser. A loser. One of them. You are not a loser. Right. If you're minding God, you're doing what God told you to do, you are a winner. Right. We have got it made today. I've got the best facility. I've got, got Sunday school rooms that ain't being used. I've got a full basement. I've got a nice sanctuary. I've got people that love me and respect me as, as a man of God. I've not got a lot, but I've got a few. Thank God for the few. Amen. Amen. God has always dealt with the remedy. Amen. I have to remind myself of that. I have to remind myself where two or three are gathered together. Kind of hard to hear that. <laughs> I like to say, we're 500 and 1,000 are gathered together. There you be me. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> no, it's been two or three. I preach just like this one time to five people. I get to go to Randy Griffiths' church once in a while. You talk about feeling intimidated. I, this preacher here does. He runs like 500 in Sunday school. I preach there like I preach here, but man, I I feel like a fish out of water. I'm thinking, would you, uh, Brother Randy, if you don't mind, could you take 450 of them people and put them in a fellowship? Let me preach at least 50. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Loser. In his name, he's a fighter. Also means adder. A-D-D-E-R. <coughs> Dan Adder. Amen. Amen. Another thing. I like to say this. We'll see these preachers get up. I mean, God will get on a preacher. I mean, you can see the Holy Ghost on him. He'll preach, man. That blesses my heart. And you know you'll see these other preachers? Yeah. They'll fold their arms. Yeah. They'll sit on God. They won't amen because God's blessing somebody else instead of them. Yeah. I'll tell you, we need to get over that carnality. Yeah. I don't care who's in. I don't give a rip who's preaching when God shows up and somebody starts doing something to make the power of God start falling on people and people get under the conviction of the come to be saved with the grace of God. I don't care who's preaching and I hope it's me, but today I still love it, brother. Amen. 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 We don't want to give a rib who's preaching. Well, I want to see your anointing. I want to see the anointing of God on you when you preach. And I want to be happy about it. We need to fight this old carnality. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all in Him. Lifting Him up. I hope I've done that tonight. I got one other. One other thing, but I'm so messed up on my notes now. I don't know where to even turn. But he was last in the line. Last in life. Last in the land. We think we got it hard. 
we get discouraged. I thought about Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm not going to try to read it. Five times we see 40 stripes, save one, 39 stripes. Three times beaten with rods. Right. One stone left for dead. Three times I was shipwrecked. One day and a night in the deep. In perils of wilderness. Perils of painfulness. Watching, hunger and thirst. Fasting, cold, nakedness. Besides all this, the things which I have, I have the burden within the care of all the churches. And we think we got it rough. Yeah. Lord, be ashamed of ourselves. Yeah. I've never had it so good, and you have neither. Yeah. I listen to Brother Noble. I love Brother Noble and his wife, and I appreciate him so much. Sure. Wish I could do more for him. I, uh, the work he's got is just a tremendous work. Beyond my comprehension of what he's doing and dealing with the little uh, people in Romania, the little hungry kids and I, I didn't break my heart to think about it. Thank God for a man that can go there and do that. I just thank God to leave me. <laughs> I respect him. <laughs> thank you for him. <laughs> Vietnam. Philippines. Right. And I want to be a part of that, don't you? Amen. I can't go and I wouldn't be affected if I went, but he is. So I want to help him go. Amen. Amen. Dan, I believe that had a smile. Dan had a smile on his face. I'd rather be a child of God in the backside of nowhere than to be a sinner by, on my way to hell. Yeah. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Yeah. Even if I wasn't a preacher, I'm glad I'm saved. I know where I'm going. Yeah. I know when it happened. I was there when God saved my soul. I've never been the same since that time. Uh, I, I thank God one day after a while. They told me in, 19, in 2017 that I had two years to live. Well, they don't, they don't know everything, praise the Lord. And, uh, and October uh, uh, the 8th of 2018, I got me a liver, a new liver, and I never was a drinker. Uh, but my, I had the cirrhosis, severe cirrhosis of the liver. They said, you, you got it at the most two years. Well, I'm still here and I'm still preaching and God still has something for me to do. Amen. 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 But I got to take a lot of medication. <laughs> well, Amen. But I'm here to preach his brother in Christ. I'm still loving God. Amen. I'm still trying to help his people. God must have had a reason for me to be here. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Last in line. Last in life. Last in the land. You know something else? He was last in legend. I'll, I'll, let me see if I can find that. <laughs> Too much to remember. I'm hurrying. I promise you I am hurrying. Last in legend. All the other tribes he left, they all left the legend behind. Then there was no preservation, or I should say per preservation of his heritage. It's never been recorded. Dan was a nobody. He had a son named Schumann. Schumann's name means to be depressed or surrounded by a pitfall. His own children were eat up with depression, discouraged, down with losers. <coughs> God can use a nobody. <laughs> right. right. You don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth to be used of God. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. God can use them preachers in Alabama. God can use that North Carolina preacher. Is that where it was? Right. Praise the Lord. I got to preach one time in North Carolina. Yeah. Wow. I thought I was really growing then. I mean, he's just right now. I'm in North Carolina. Or somewhere I was there to preach. Brother James Goyd. Wow. Rob, God has promoted me. I got over that real quick, by the way. But you get them thoughts, boy, God's finally coming through. God's finally promoted me. Woo, I'm going to preach in North Carolina. Hallelujah. Get over it. God's got you where He wants you. God's got you where I'm. I did not know where I'm sharing Baptist Church. Just a few. I have to even thank myself where the address is. <laughs> Amen. But that's where God planned you. Grow there. Amen. And then do what God can help you to do. Amen. Damn, while other tribes were laying around enjoying their land, and he said, I'll just go up and fight for more, more land. I believe that because I believe that God wants me to. Do. What God wants you to do because you know God wants you to do it. Amen. Amen. So, oh, Brother Larry, we, 
our, 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 our funds get pretty low. Are you sure we can afford a revival? Well, let me say this. We can't afford not to. We're dead in a bunch of doorknobs around here. If I can't get you stirred up, let's get somebody in here that can stir you up. I, I don't like dead. I don't like funerals. I don't like quietness in the house of God. I want to come. I want to see somebody get excited about the Lord. I want to see somebody shout. Praise the Lord. That brother back there, he'll get with us sometime. He'll start shouting. I'll jump out of my skin. I say, Brother Earl, does it bother you when people shout? I said, no. It bothers you more when they don't. <laughs> shout. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's worthy. Right. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. I know we're all different, but we all have emotions. Right. Emotions are a gift from God. Right. Amen. Amen. But you don't have to be emotional like me, and I understand that. But don't get upset because I'm emotional. Because right. I see my brothers getting whipped with a switch and learned me to cry before I got there. And when I start thinking about what God done for me, a little nobody couldn't start, I could have quoted you a verse of scripture. I only dated one woman. We got married, and her mom and dad wouldn't let her date me unless I went to church. So what, what else could I do but go to church? And I got saved by the grace of God when we first got married, and we've been going to church ever since then. Amen. My wife got sick, and I told her, honey, you can't die, because I don't know how to date. <laughs> she said, if you try that, I'll go back to <laughs> I'm just an old sinner saved with the grace of God. He said, I'm going to go to the top of a few more mountains, fight a few more battles. You can look at the geographical map of the area and shows that he went up from the bottom to the top. Judah, who was at the top, is now at the bottom. Or he was at the top, now at the bottom. Jesus said, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. I don't know what all that means other than the Jewish nation as I see that and the Gentile church and all the born-again believers of the church makes up the church and all that. And I understand that, but, but at the same time, he was at the bottom, but there was a time where he reached the top. Amen. 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 Let me say this. He was a blessing to others. Amen. Right where he was, there was three branches came out off the land. You can read this on the geographical scale. It formed the Jordan River. Dan's, Dan's land formed the Jordan River. He was a blessing to others. Every drop of water that went to the other tribes came through Dan's land. <laughs> Amen. A little insignificant unnoticed, in the back of the line, with no bragging about his life, no back in the line, back in the life, lost in the land, finally gets a legend. Amen. <laughs> he blesses all the tribes. Amen. You don't know what a blessing you were to me today. <laughs> If you're looking for a blessing, you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. I love Brother Andrew Phipps. I love him. He's my friend. Yeah. Now, when I think about Brother Andrew and me, I think of me. I think of Andrew. He's one of my heroes. I've been hearing him for years. Man, I've been getting up years. Listen to Billy Sunday. Oh, Billy Sunday. Billy Mitchell. On the radio. Brother Andrew. Bring on that music. And I'd get ready to go Amen. to Sunday school and teach. And I was better move when I got there. Amen. Brother Andrew encouraged me in that. Amen. Teaching. I'm glad he's having to come up. Amen. Amen. He's a great teacher. He's a yeah. great scholar. He's a great historian. If people have listened to him, they have learned. Amen. Amen. I, I mean that. He's got something to offer. He's very gifted. Amen. We all have our gifts. Amen. Here's a gift right here. I told him a while ago, I said, you know what? One of your gifts is a gift of administration. Yeah. If you would give me that paper and that program, I'll screw it all up. I'll mess it up. <laughs> He'll have it organized. <laughs> I'll just learn to hand it to Brother Coos. <laughs> Take care of that, Brother <laughs> I don't know what that's like. I can't organize. I can't even organize. I tried to fix my wife dinner the other day. 
<laughs> I, I, tried to, I tried to learn how to cook and I had some nice fish fillets and I thought, well, what should I, I put the potatoes on first. Then I'll fix the cornbread. And then I'll fix the fish fillets and maybe if I get time, I'll put some pinto beans in there. And she's in there and they go, I'm going to surprise her. She's going to be happy. I burned the potatoes. <laughs> the cornbread patties was so greasy and running down your cheeks. But uh, one thing about it, the fish was pretty good. I made sure it was brown and I turned it off at the right time, pulled it out there at the right time. And she said, thank you, honey. But you sure ain't a cook. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know much about cooking. But I sure do know how to eat. <laughs> Dan. Study the book. Study the book. Dan. And you'll find what a blessing he is. Amen. Every drop of water came through Dan's land. Remember Saul? How he messed up? Remember the prophet went to the sons of Jesse? Who was the most insignificant son that he had? David. Who, was, who ended up being a king? David. David. Don't you dare, preachers. I'm trying to encourage us. I need it. Don't think you're insignificant. God will use the lesser of the least if he wants to to accomplish his work. You are somebody in the Lord, but don't get lifted up in pride, man. We are somebody. God is interested in your work. God is interested in Charity Baptist Church. Amen. 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 God's got an interest. And I'm there until God says you can go. I'll be there until the duration. Because like I said, I wasn't raised to quit. My dad said, if you want to get a job, son, go. you have to start at the top. I said, top of what? Said, top of the dirt. Get you the dig digging the ditch. <laughs> Can't get the dish done until you start at the top. <laughs> I see my daddy clean old cars and shine them up. Matter of fact, there's an old preacher. I don't know what his name was. I don't know what kind of denomination he was. I'm just a boy. My dad died at 52. He had some heart attack. And the preacher bought a car off my dad. And he showed up every week to pay my mother money until he got it paid off. And my dad wasn't a liar. <laughs> But he wouldn't tell you everything he needed to know unless you asked him. <laughs> my dad was selling this old Hudson. And my mother came out the back door and said, You going to buy that old Hudson? You better take this five gallon of oil because you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> dad didn't sell that car that day. <laughs> never mentioned it, did he? And I saw my dad tear them engines down. Some of y'all may know this. I saw him take a leather belt yeah. and put it around the crank. Put the fishes back on there. It'd run pretty good for a month or two. She <laughs> might make him ten or fifteen dollars. <laughs> and he was raising thirteen kids. He couldn't. He couldn't decide whether. And to get a job back that day, they'd lay off in no time. I seen my daddy. I was a little bit toe-headed boy, and I'm sitting on a little bench chair. My daddy was way up there in a water tower. Had a rope around his waist. Had harnesses around him with a paintbrush and a can painting that water tower. If it was a job, he'd do it. Amen. Amen. Hey, we was taught to work. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. My dad didn't hand me everything. But it taught me to be responsible. Yeah. Hey, what's the matter with kids today? Yeah. They're spoiled for one thing. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And they, they don't have any responsibility. Right. And a lot of them never had a good old fashioned right. whooping. Yeah. 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 I tell you, if my dad was here, was here in this life and I was a little kid today, they'd take him up for abuse. Yeah. Child right. abuse. And I love my dad to this day, and I was not abused. I was trained. I was taught. I was 17 years old one time, and I got too bigger than my britches, and I said something to my dad. You weren't even allowed to look cross-eyed at my dad. My dad's six foot three. He's bigger than any of us boys. I'm a little Larry, you know. And my dad grabbed me by the shirt. Next thing I know, I had my shirt dripped off of me, and he's standing there, and my big brother Junior jumped between us and said, I'm dead, son, I'm dead. It's just Larry, you know how an idiot he is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it was then. Dad slapped across the room. He didn't give no speeches. I never got a time out. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to interrupt an adult. 
<laughs> Get this. I'm, I'm trying to quit here. I should have done already quit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I, I'm bad on the schedule sometimes. <laughs> Back in that day, my dad was the kind of person that other men liked. My dad played music. All the musicians and people would come to my house. And dad would make a remark like, I don't know where these neighbor kids don't go home. They're all over the place. We're crawling out from the woodwork. He'd make a joke about me being neighbor's kids. <laughs> you know, mom and dad put a big meal on. You know what? The kids wasn't allowed to go to the table until the adults eat. Yeah. You ever see that happen? Mm -hmm. We was able to go after they ate. And I started to tell you something while I'm going off finish this. I thought my mom taught us to be clean, not to eat after one another, not to drink. And my daddy, after we would eat at the table, we had a big table. I see my daddy go around and take up the scraps. And I thought my daddy was nasty until I got older. But my daddy would eat what we left. Mm. That's where I was raised. Amen. I love my dad to this day. I respect him. I was just starting to get to know him, Brother Jordan. When I turned 18, my daddy died. Mm. I miss him to this day. Yes, sir. He was a great man. Yes, sir. He raised a good family. Amen. He raised me. He taught me, son, you get married, you stay married. Yeah. He wasn't even a Christian at that time. My daddy got saved in the hospital full of Christian. Christian, uh, my name is Harold, 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 pastor in, in, in Bloodsville, Indiana, Christian church. Shaw, Shaw, Harold Shaw. No. Anyway, Henry Mary and Harold was at my daddy when dad got saved there in that hospital bed. My daddy threw that tent, oxygen tent off of him. He big old boy, my daddy was. He pulled both them preachers in there and hugged them to death. Praise the Lord that he got saved. He knew what it was. That's the time I saw him. I was working with the Coca Cola Company and I had a, a privilege of going in the hospital bed. My dad was in the hospital and I went in to visit dad. And my dad was so kind and sweet. I thought, is this, I'm sure I'm in the wrong room. Am I in the right room? <laughs> dad didn't talk, talk kind to as much. But he said, son, I want you to be good. And take care of mom. When my daddy died this night, I was still home. I got a good heritage. Amen. Now when they write the book, Amen. they'll say, well, he was a nobody. He ain't nobody special. But God, sorry, God used me a little bit, and I prayed to the baby. I'm so glad that I'm saved. Amen. Glad I'm not going to hell. Amen. I'm glad my dad. That's the first time I've ever heard him say. I didn't know what they meant. He said my mom shouted all the way home from the hospital. She watched herself in the hospital. Going home, my older sister said, Mom, shout all the way home. Because Daddy got saved. Amen. <laughs> he hugged my wife. I was dating. He hugged her like one day ever hugged me. <laughs> he told my older brother, Judah, why don't you get your good girlfriend like Larry, your brother? He liked, he liked my wife one day. He just kissed her on the cheek. Why well, he never kissed me on the cheek? He might have kissed me like that. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'm trying to say, preachers, <laughs> be steadfast, unmovable, yeah. always abounding in, in the work of the Lord. Because yeah. you know your labor is not in vain in, in the Lord. Yes. Maybe you don't have 100. Yeah. Maybe you don't have 50. Yeah. But you be faithful to the few you have. Yeah. You just preach. Yeah. God yeah. bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Stand, please. Let's go to the Bible. Come. And the Lord gave you something there that you just need. Brought you to a point to understand I'm not the first one that's been in this situation. So Laurel said, you know, you related to Dan and all that Dan went through. Right. Folks, most of us could pick the pieces out of that life somewhere. 
God said, I use Dan. I use you. 